What's going on everybody, C4 here, welcome back to the channel, and tonight, doubleheader, second video, I mean it's the first Saturday of Madden 22 season, you know we're going to be bringing that heat. This morning, I dropped a video talking about the sim stats in Madden franchise mode, very much go check that out, especially if you are, you know, you're looking, you truly want to do your research, whether or not Madden 22 is going to be for you this year, and I want to follow it up with another very popular video that we do every single year, but with a different twist. Today we're going to be looking at the best position switches in Madden 22 franchise mode and rather than just focusing on the familiar faces that we see every single year you know Golden Tate you know he's, he's probably what a free agent he's even on a team right now you know like LaVisca Chanel, Tyler Lockett like all those super overpowered ones are fine and we'll get to it but I want to go team by team by team so that you might be on one of these teams in your franchise mode you might have picked one of these teams as your rebuild you might not have thought of certain positional switches that can present huge boost on either the offense or defensive side of the ball. So we're going to burn right through that, and hopefully you guys get a little bit of information out of today's video and be able to apply that into your own Madden franchise modes. Tomorrow, we'll have a brand new rebuild drop on the channel. Monday, we'll kick off our Pink Slip series, so a lot of content coming your way. If it's your first time stopping by, hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button. Helps out the channel a lot. Let's get into the video. So we're going to start with the Chicago Bears. Work all the way down. I'm going to try to be as quickly and efficient through these as possible. Uh, one thing you're not going to see is just like meme switches. Like people are like, oh my god, C4, all you're doing is you know moving guys from wide receiver to running back or running back to wide receiver or safety to linebacker. But there's only so many positions that are actually beneficial to switch. That's what I'm making this video. I'm not trying to make a meme video like, hey, Lane Johnson, move him to quarterback or make Justin Fields or Lamar Jackson and move them to running back. If you want the memes, you know, there's other content creators out there that make you know videos like that that you're not really going to take anything away from. So for the Chicago Bears... Starting with it, you know, I made a couple switches. Cohen, I thought would might be a good wide receiver. But the best move for me, I think, is look, you look at the running back room. Montgomery, Williams, even Cohen. Not a lot of speed there. So if you want a speed option, Marquise Goodwin. Flip him from wide receiver to running back. Brings in 96 speed, 96 acceleration, 91 agility, 88 change of direction, 76 carry, which is not great, but not bad. 82 ball carrier vision. We got good breaks, plus 70 break tackle, 78 spin, 76 juke, plus 80 catching out the backfield. So a great third down option here if you want to add much needed speed to the Bears backfield. Another thing you might be able to take from this video as we take a look here at the Cincinnati Bengals is you may be able to switch depth players to a brand new position where they become your starter. They're an upgrade over the actual launch day starter that you have on your roster. So I have two actually here for the Cincinnati Bengals. First up is Auden Tate. Moving over, he's, you know, Barry, you know, you don't want him taking a spot. You can go with Boyd, Higgins, and Chase as your wide receiver, and you move Auden Tate to tight end. We're at 6'5", 230. That's a believable size for a tight end, and he is now your highest overall on the roster. Another one is second on the depth chart at strong safety behind Ricardo Allen is Von Bell. And moving Von Bell to left outside linebacker, where the current start on the Bengals is Jordan Evans, who's a 66. Von Bell is a 77. That is how you maximize your players here on the Bengals roster. For the Buffalo Bills, this one's very easy. I knew this one right before I started the video. It's wide receiver Isaiah McKenzie. Goes from, I think, a 74 overall wide receiver to an 83 overall running back. Very good skill set. The ball carry vision, the change of direction, the acceleration, the athletic ability. It's everything takes off the boxes, especially for a running back room that doesn't have, you know, a proven guy yet. The fact that you're getting a massive upgrade right away to an RB1 for McKenzie, who's Wide receiver four, wide receiver five on Buffalo. This is the best position change on this team. So not every team is going to have an overpowered, just one-time player position switch. That is the Denver Broncos. They don't really have that guy, but I can give you a better defense than what you would have at launch. So I'm going to take Bradley Chubb, move him from outside linebacker to defensive end, where he's an 84, one-point downgrade. And then on the inside, that then allows us to kick Shelby Harris into defensive tackle, which is a 10-point upgrade over Mike Purcell. Yeah, 6'2", 290. Not really a nose tackle, but look at the look at the stats here. 81 block shed, 86 tackle. He's going to be stout against the run. He can do the job. And then that allows you to take Von Miller's backup, uh, Malik Reed, and either use him at right outside linebacker or from like a fun standpoint, take Baron Browning with his insane athletic profile, move him to outside linebacker, use this guy, and develop him into something special. For the Cleveland Browns, I'm going to make a switch. I'm going to take their starting free safety, Ronnie Harrison Jr., and move him to linebacker. Absolutely has the skill set to be a linebacker, 6'3", 215. Good speed, good hit power, good tackling, good pursuit. Then that also frees up at free safety. Room for Grant Delpit to develop into something special. High ceiling free safety, 72 with a star dev. So we're taking a look at the Tampa Bay Bucks. They're like the most complete roster in the game. I was like trying to stretch something like John Franklin played quarterback, last chance shoe, all of that. 
Uh, the one thing that I think could you know, maybe get you out of a pinch here potentially would be if you have your starting left tackle go down. Like if you lose Donovan Smith and there's nothing on the free agency market, because you have OG Howard and Cam Brake, you'll be fine at tight end and you can shift Gronk into left tackle where he's a serviceable left tackle 64 overall. I'm, I'm obviously grasping at straws. We're doing all 32 teams and some teams just absolutely for the Bucks where they're just S tier. Pretty much every position, this is the only spot that if you do have a left tackle injury, get weird with Gronk. I'm gonna give you something here a little bit more practical than Gronk at left tackle with his like high 60s passing stats. And that is the Arizona Cardinals backfield. James Conner's running back one there. 86 speed, you know, you get Edmonds 89 speed, not a lot of speed there. So we have two depth wide receivers that make a big time addition of speed to the backfield. Andy Isabella here, 95 speed. We have 74 carry in, 80 ball carry vision. Pretty solid, gives you an option there. But my recommendation actually would be Rondale Moore, the rookie out of Purdue. He goes from a 71 rookie up to an 80 rookie at that running back spot. You get 94 speed, 91 change out of direction, 74 carry, 88 ball carrier vision, and you have a franchise running back. You have a guy that's, I think that would make him the highest rated rookie running back over, I think he's over Najee Harris. So there you go, Rondale Moore, very, very overpowered. The Chargers didn't have a whole lot to work with here, but I'm going to make the suggestion of Joe Reed. It's actually the biggest uptick that I had from a base rating. Went from a 67 wideout to a 73 running back, 6'1", 225. So he's actually kind of built like a running back. The stats are solid, 85 ball carrier vision, the break tackle, the speed, the carry in 74, which is pretty much like the minimum threshold you want. So I guess if you're doing a Chargers franchise and your running back room gets absolutely ravaged with injury, Joe Reed makes an easy switch for you guys so you don't have to spend your money in free agency. The Kansas City Chiefs kind of like the Tampa Bay Bucs. Really well-rounded roster for the most part. Not a lot of big position switches. So I'm just going to highlight this one. This is the biggest upgrade I could get by moving guys around. Dorian O'Daniel is the current starting left outside linebacker, 69 overall. So I took depth safety Will Parks and moved him. He's 73, almost a 74 right there. So that's, uh, you know, if you just want that immediate one-year impact playmaker at outside linebacker, go with Will Parks. Good speed, solid hit power, good tackling, and obviously has some solid coverage stats. So the Colts are up next, and I would say so far, this is probably the most unnecessary switch, but we'll talk about it because there wasn't really any other good one. So the, for the Colts right now, this is their current wide receiver depth chart. Hilton is wide receiver one, Pascal at two, Paris Campbell is three. Their wide receiver four is Micah Pittman, who's also a 73 overall. And if you move him to tight end at 6'4", 225, he goes up to a 78. I mean, obviously he has skill sets that would be very much indicative of a pass catching tight end. Don't really know why you'd want to do it, but you know, if you want upside, the fact that he's instantly now tied or would be your tight end one versus a wide receiver four, thought it was worth mentioning. For the Dallas Cowboys, I know this is a switch they just made in real life, but if you take Keanu Neal, who's a 77 middle linebacker, which would have him behind Jalen Smith, linebacker two, you flip him back to strong safety, you instantly get a five point upgrade over the current Dallas Cowboys starter, and he's 80 with a star dev, only 26. Probably the best use of your assets on the Cowboys defense. That needs to get a lot better this season. The best position switch on the Dolphins is Jakeem Grant. Move him from wide receiver, put him at running back. Because you look at the current running back room, Gaskin, 88 speed, 88 speed for Brown, 90 for Ahmed. 80, it's, it's a slow backfield. So you take Jakeem Grant, who's buried on the depth chart. He's like literally like wide receiver five or six. You get that 94 speed, 92 acceleration. Pretty good agility, the 74 carry, AKA pretty much any wide receiver that's a depth wide receiver that's a known return man is most likely gonna be able to make that switch to running back, but just add an instant speedster to the backfield here for the Dolphins. If you're finding that it's just too difficult to run and break runs off with guys that are sub 90 speed. On to my Eagles, there's not much. Like, yeah, you got Lane Johnson has a little bit of passing stats. Same with Greg Ward, who's a quarterback in college. Tyree Jackson, the tight end has 93 throw power. So if you're doing like a cupcake squad, uh, you know, 71 short, actually 93 throw power, good athlete. You could actually think about moving Tyree Jackson. But I, I think in terms of like just best switch for the Eagles, if you're only planning on using one tight end, go with Dallas Goddard. And then if you switch Zach Ertz in, who just make him a slot, doesn't have the speed to really win on the outside, but his short route running is, is pretty solid. Uh, catching is high, he instantly becomes the second highest rated wide receiver on the Philadelphia Eagles. This one was very tough, toughest one so far. Falcons have not a great roster in Madden 22 from an overall standpoint. So there was not really any OP position switches. This is just more so like my suggestion if you're playing Atlanta. Uh, at right defensive end, they're switching with 3-4. They have Grady Jarrett, who is an 88 overall right defensive end 
uh, at least whatever the boost is. He goes up to a 91 at defensive tackle, and you could definitely get by with him as your defensive tackle in a 3-4. And then that way there, just frees up a spot for Marlon Davis to get on the field as a starter with a dev trade. He has a young dev trade. He's only 23. You got to maximize your young players when you're the Atlanta Falcons, so I would suggest just making this switch. The position switch I recommend for Washington is not one I don't know if I would recommend per se but it's probably the funnest one you have scary terry firmly wide receiver one their 89 superstar their new signing curtis samuels an 83 overall but if you move into running back he takes a massive jump up to a 91 overall the stats look solid good speed Ball carrier vision, juke move, change on direction. And just like that, by moving Curtis Samuel to running back, you have a guy that's one point higher than Saquon Barkley, three points higher than Zeke Elliott. You instantly have the highest rated running back in the NFC East. Take a look at the San Francisco 49ers. This one's going to come down to play style. The current starting left outside linebacker for the 49ers is James Burgess, 66. I'm going to give you two options. One, you have D Ford, who's firmly behind Eric Armstead as the left defensive end. He's left defensive end too. He's an 84 overall, but obviously you're getting a pure pass rusher. So if you're going to be playing a lot of coverage, probably not going to want this one. So I'm going to give you a second option here. And that's Tony Jefferson, who is the backup strong safety behind Jaquiski Tired. He gives you a 77 overall at that left outside linebacker spot. And obviously as a safety, you're going to get a little bit more on the coverage side of things with 72 man, 78 zone. So whatever you want to do, be it a pass rusher or a guy that's more coverage oriented, you have options here for the Niners. New York Giants, I got two interesting ones you could consider. First up, I have Dante Pettis, who's a 73 overall wide receiver. If you move into running back, instantly jumps up to a 79 and becomes your top option behind Saquon Barkley. And if you're rocking with injuries on, maybe a little bit concerned about the durability there for Saquon. Stats are good. 75 carry again, because Pettis was a known return man when he was at college at Washington. So that is something that I think could be worthwhile. Another one is looking at the secondary here. I mean, you probably could, it'd be interesting to have Logan Ryan as a corner, shouldn't affect his rating too, too much. But you have Julian Love here, solid, young, strong safety, 75 overall. And that thing gives you the luxury because you are rocking a 3-4. Your current middle linebackers are Blake Martinez, 79, and then Ryan Anderson, who's a 67. I would take Jabril Peppers, who's a 78, much better skill set, played linebacker a little bit, played everywhere for Michigan, but he has a very good skill set for middle linebacker. Got the speed, got the tackling, got the hit power, had the pursuit, the play rec, the coverage ability. So both of those suggestions could be very beneficial to your Giants franchise. For the Jacksonville Jaguars, couple moves you could do here. Obviously, Team Tebow, you people want to see that. If you move him from tight end to quarterback, he's a 58 QB. Good to know for future series. At the running back spot, they have a couple guys that are pretty overpowered. LaVisca Chanel goes from a 77 wide receiver, I think he might be 76, to an 84 overall running back. Tavon Austin goes from a 71 to a 78 overall running back. Agnew gets a plus six. He's a known return man. He goes from a 70 wide receiver to a 76 running back. But it was easily LaVisca Chanel. That is very beneficial. But, I mean, this is more so like you're doing like a fancy draft from a prospect perspective. Because you wouldn't really do this if you're using the Jags. You need Chanel to develop as a wide receiver. So a suggestion I would potentially look at is Colin Johnson. Very, very weak tight end room for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Colin Johnson, I think, is a 69 overall wide receiver who jumps up to a 72 overall tight end. All you need to know is that he is like this fifth or sixth wide receiver, maybe even the seventh wide receiver on the Jags depth chart. You move him to tight end, he instantly becomes your tight end one. For the Jacksonville Jaguars, some players are just maybe more so interesting than beneficial. Tebow going from tight end to quarterback. He's a 58 overall quarterback in Madden 22. We have a couple running back options here. Agnew goes from a 70 to a 76 from a wide receiver to a running back. Austin goes from a 71 to a 78 wide receiver to a running back. But the big one is LaVisca Chanel. Goes from a 76 overall wide receiver to an 84 overall running back. I don't, but this is like one of those things. That's just good to know if you're doing like a fantasy draft. Maybe you want a sleeper at running back. You can get Chanel. Uh, who's only 22, a very high ceiling at running back. But you probably wouldn't make that move if you're actually playing as the Jags because you have James Robinson, you have Travis Etienne. So the move I would suggest is buried on the depth chart way down here. You have a 69 overall wide receiver known as Colin Johnson, who's 6'6". Six six. If you move him to tight end, he then goes up to a 72 overall and becomes your clear-cut instant starter for a tight end for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Their tight end room is in shambles. This is probably the most beneficial if you're doing a Jags franchise. Two options here for the New York Jets. First is Lamarcus Joyner, who's a 79 free safety. If you move him to corner, he's now an 80 overall, and he's instantly corner one on the Jets roster. Plus, you have room behind him. Ashton Davis is free safety two, but he's 75 with the star dev, so plenty 
uh, enough meat on the bone there to develop him into a really nice starter for you. The fun option here is taking 73 overall rookie wide receiver Elijah Moore, moving to running back, where he's instantly running back one for the Jets. You know, if you're feeling you're okay at wide receiver with Corey Davis, with Denzel Mims, with Jamison Crowder in the slot, and you want to add something more to the backfield, sure, no one's going to fault you by switching Elijah Moore there. It's a big time overall. He's RB1, has a very intriguing skill set. Detroit Lions are up next, kind of like the Atlanta Falcons, one of the you know, lower rated rosters, not a whole lot of room. So the only suggestion I really have is Corn Elder, who's a 72 corner. So he's buried, he's corner four, corner five, depending how you look at it. Moving to free safety, because you you know the other free safety is Marlow 69 or Will Harris, who's a 69. And Corn Elder, I mean, he can play safety. He has, he has some pretty decent tackling ability for the corners on the roster. 66 tackles, 75 pursuit. 66 hit power is not great, but at least it's a starting upgrade. The only other thing I kind of came up with was like, it's another running back room that doesn't have a lot of speed. So your highest depth wide receiver that has okay carrying is Damian Ratley, 6'2", 200 pounds. So has the body that, you know, could realistically be a running back. Got 92 speed, 76 carry, you know, okay other abilities, but you know, kind of, it's kind of a tough one for the Lions. Not a great roster. Green Bay Packers, the one position switch that could be fun, and that's the keyword is fun. There's no real switches that are overly beneficial to the roster. Maybe moving Rashawn Gary from outside linebacker and put him on the defensive line. It's just Randall Cobb. He's a 77 overall wide receiver, but if you move him to running back, he's an 86 overall and gives you, and I, again, it's just an overall boost from a skill set standpoint. You know, he's one of the better return men that's in the league, so it's obviously going to transition well to a running back. But I mean, you know, you're probably fine with Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon as your one-two punch. It's just, you know, the drastic overall change. So sure, if you want an 86 running back, by all means, throw Randall Cobb into the mix. For the Carolina Panthers, it's gonna be a little bit more practical. You know, not a strong roster. There's not a lot of OP position changes, especially now that they don't have Curtis Samuel anymore. So what I have done is I looked for a depth corner to try to improve the rest of the secondary. And what I did was I took Rashawn Melvin, who's a 74 corner. So he's corner four on the roster, or tied for corner four. But you definitely want JC Horn in the field. But he's a 74 at strong safety, where the current strong safety for the Panthers is either a 66 burst or a 66 Sam Franklin. The fact that he's 6'2", 195, so he's kind of built like a safety. Good speed, the pursuit, the tackling stuff's not great, but his 82 pursuit, the coverage, it's its probably what I'm gonna do in my in my franchise. I recommend you guys do it too. For the New England Patriots, gotta give credit to Bill Belichick. There's, I, this is so far the hardest team to try to figure out a position switch because Belichick got all these guys optimized. The one I could argue from a user standpoint, we have Adrian Phillips here who's a 78 overall strong safety. You have Kyle Duggar, who was a uh, pretty high pick for them last year. He's also a 78 strong safety, but from a user linebacker standpoint, very good. He has the skills to play linebacker. You look at, you know, Hightower and Bentley, not really the fastest. So from a user linebacker standpoint, if you're fine with Phillips at strong safety, Kyle Duggar, 73 with the dev trait, 89 speed, 89 acceleration, 83 pursuit, 71 block shed, 88 hit power, pretty good coverage ability, 92 jumping. I just think if you're trying to maximize, you're not so much worried about the back end of your roster, but you're trying to find a great user middle linebacker, absolutely Kyle Duggar every day of the week over Jawan Bentley. But again, kind of stretching here to try to find a Patriot player because Bill Belichick got these guys optimized. For the Raiders, we have a spot here at Strong Safety where it's held by Kyle Joseph, returning Kyle Joseph. He's a 77. Behind him was a 74 overall Strong Safety, which if you remember our Raiders series, you know Jonathan Abram very well. So he goes from a 74 depth strong safety. If you move to left upside linebacker, he's a big time upgrade over Tanner Muse and obviously possesses a skill set with a dev trait that is very conducive to a fun user linebacker. Has the hit power, has the speed, has the pursuit. Need to work on the coverage ability just a little bit, but he's a really, really fun player. And I think, they, there you go, just similar to Tanner Muse, just a little bit better. And it maximizes your young players on a pretty bad Raiders defense. This is switch I would recommend for the Rams is at free safety, where you have Terrell Burgess, who's a 74, have the dev trait, let's get him on the field. But as you launch into the game, he's free safety two, because free safety one is also 74 overall Taylor Rapp, where I recommend moving him into middle linebacker, where he's now a three-point upgrade over the current starter, Kenny Young. Has a good skill set for a linebacker. Solid speed, pursuit 81, hit power 82. Block shed's not great, gonna obviously be much more of a cover type linebacker, but the 76 zone, it's it's legit. This would easily be the best move to kind of make the Rams defense as well-rounded as you can. The Baltimore Ravens, kind of like the Patriots, pretty well optimized. It was kind of tough to find a position switch that actually benefits the Ravens directly, but this is more so a prospect that you could come available. 
uh, via trade or if you're doing a fantasy draft. So that's Devin Duvernay. He's a 71 wide receiver, but if you switch him to running back, he's a 78 running back with that dev trait. 5'11", 200 pounds, so it's not like you're trying to switch a wide receiver. That's 5'7", buck 80. 93 speed, 91 acceleration, 87 agility, 78 carry, 85 ball carry vision, 81 juke move, 79. Like, this is actually probably one of the better OP Kind of not realistic from the sense of like, I don't think you'd ever make that move in real life, but like if you're genuinely trying to find a guy that can make that switch to running back from wide receiver that makes some sense, Devin Duvernay is that dude. For the New Orleans Saints, from a practical standpoint, because you have Malcolm Jenkins with the boost here is an 83, I would take 84 overall safety, Chauncey Gardner Johnson, and move him to left outside linebacker. Well, your current starter, Zach Bond, is a 69, and Chauncey Gardner Johnson gives you an 82 overall. Something else that's kind of worth noticing is in mentioning is that James Winston's your starter at 73. Behind him usually is Taysom Hill, who's a 67. If you take Taysom Hill, move him back to tight end, he goes up to a 72, and while you'd be kind of stunting the growth of Adam Troutman, technically he would be your starting tight end. So that's kind of worth noting if you're doing a Saints franchise. Let's do this one live, because this was the number one OP position switch last year. That was Tyler Lockett. You know, this is just... This is just because you want to do it. He's an 88 overall wide receiver. Last year, he was perfect 99s when you moved him into the running back spot. Let's see if it's the same here this year. And it is. It's, it's you know, hey, anytime you can get a 99, sure. I don't know why you'd ever want to do that because the drop off at wide receiver two to Eskridge, the rookie, is substantial. But for an instant, perfect 99, big upgrade over Chris Carson. Sure, here's Tyler Lockett for everyone that just wants the most OP abilities and doesn't really care about the practicality of it. So for the Pittsburgh Steelers, this one here is just more so practical than anything. It's James Washington, 74 overall wide receiver. You move him to running back, he's a 77. Reason why I wanted to highlight this, A, Pittsburgh's pretty optimized. There was no other real realistic position switches I would make, but James Washington's almost always on the trade block. And if you're hurting for a running back, he's still 25, got the build of a running back at 5'11", 213. The skill set is pretty good. 91 speed, 77 carry, 77 break tackle, 83 ball carrier vision. The spin move is in the 80s. Like he's just a guy plus with the catching, a really dynamic playmaker that if you're really hurting for a running back, could be able to make an easy trade for James Washington, switch him to running back and have someone that's gonna be very beneficial to your offense. Houston's another tough one, not a great roster. So from uh, if I was the Texans, what could I do to make the biggest change to my offense? I would look at a wide receiver moving the tight end. And that is what I did with Chris Conley, 74 wide receiver. But when you move to tight end, he's a 78, plus four upgrade over the current starter in Jordan Aikens. And if you really want to make it realistic, just add a couple pounds, add 15 pounds. You just told him not eat nothing but Burger King. Is 6'3", if you make him 225, I think those, there's tight ends that are built like that in the NFL. And his skill set's very intriguing for a tight end. 91 speed, 81 catching, 90 acceleration. The route running's good. 83 catching traffic, 84 spec. Clearly getting nothing from the blocking department, but there's a quick plus four upgrade for the tight end spot. Just throw a couple pounds on him. I apologize already, Titan fans. There's literally, like this is, every t every single time there's a hard team takes the game. This is easily so far the hardest team to try to find a position switch. So we're just gonna meme it up. And if you move Ryan Tannehill to wide receiver, He's not god awful. He's rosterable. 60 start up because he started as a wide receiver at Texas A&M. Speed's there. 76 catching, 70 catching traffic, 78 spec. So yeah, then there's a team that there's not a legitimate or practical position switch. Let's just have a little fun. There you go. Maybe you didn't know Ryan Tannehill played wide receiver. And last but not least, we're at the Minnesota Vikings where they have three pretty good defensive tackles. You might only see two here. I'll explain why. Michael Pierce, 91. You have Dalvin Thompson coming up for the Giants. He's an 81. Look at the rest of the defensive line. Obviously, we have Daniil Hunter here with that superstar X Factor. But at right defensive end, their current starter, Stephen Weatherly, 71 overall. So if you want to maximize your day one, you're doing a one year, want to win a Super Bowl, just move Selden Richardson. He's an 82 overall defensive tackle. You move him to defensive end, only lose one point down to an 81. And out of all of the defensive tackles that are on the roster, he's the one that makes the most sense to move to defensive end. 6'3", 295, got the start out of there. The skill sets are pretty solid. 83 acceleration, 83 hit power. You have 78 block shed, 88 strength, 83 pursuit. You are gonna be more than fine moving him to defensive end. And that right there just completes a very impressive looking defensive line here for the Minnesota Vikings. So there you go, fellas. Different approach to the OP players list. I know maybe YouTube might not 
help me out as much if I just made a top 10 list. It was only a 10 minute video, but I feel like I wanted to just do something as practical for you guys. Give back to the community, do the legwork for you. So whatever team you're utilizing for your franchise modes, or if you're doing a fantasy draft and you will see some of these players today potentially become available to you, you'll keep in mind that maybe, just maybe some of these guys might be have better positions then they are listed in Madden. So I hope you guys learned something today. Thank you very much for watching. As always, if it's your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed the video or learned something. It very much helps out my videos on the YouTube algorithm. And I'll see you guys back in the next one. Tomorrow, brand new rebuild. Can't wait for it. See you then.